Thank you for auditing the always positive New Music Review Show hosted by a French professor with GOAT. Now, GOAT is, as you know, I hope, fans of this channel, one of the world's biggest Billie Eilish fans. And I am also a big Billie Eilish fan. Billie Eilish is up there with Kanye as artists who, whenever they release the smallest amount of music, you have to pay attention to it, you have to analyze it, you have to study it. So, Billie Eilish came out with a song. When, when did it come out, uh, GOAT? Yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday at... 12 o'clock. Okay, and, and Goat was there, refreshing on the computer, waiting for the song to come out. I will say I'm very happy that Billie Eilish has given her release date for her upcoming album, Now Things Are Better. What's it called? Happier Than Ever. Happier Than Ever. You gotta enunciate. Happier Than Ever. Okay, good. They can't hear you behind the mask. Uh, so I'm really happy that she's giving us a release date and dribbling out songs and creating this sense of excitement. This is what music used to be like when people release albums and you get excited and you listen to it. It wasn't all just like, here's everything and just deal with it, just stream it all at once. So I'm very excited to be studying this song, Your Power. Y-O-U-R, power. Thank you. <laughs> I initially typed it, you, your apostrophe R-E. And Goat, who's doing well in English, I was able to correct me. So what I want to do is I want to go through this song, uh, well, we want to go through the song in three stages. Lyrics, music, video. And I want to sort of come to and, and explain what these things, uh, how they all are and how the song uh, places together and sort of think about what does it mean for Billie Eilish's upcoming album, Now Things Are Good. What's it called? Happier Than Ever. Happier Than Ever. Okay. So yesterday, Goat comes down and says, oh my God. It made me cry. Did it really make you cry, Goat? It did. It did. It's kind of embarrassing, but it did. That's okay. It's good for music to, to move you. Uh, and, and then she says to me, it is exactly, it is about exactly what you think it's about. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm eating lunch uh, and I'm like, I don't know what that means. Uh, to me, your power, I don't know what it means. So at that point, Goat, what did you think that meant? I thought that your power meant someone who's either like older than you, it's just someone who has a lot more power than you and who's using it against you or against other people. Right, so initially Goat's take was that this might be about like the record industry or like the same person in uh, I Think Therefore I Am that she's super upset with. That I like, didn't actually think that, that was, that was on you. Okay, that was on me, but that, but that was kind of an idea. But right? I mean, like someone who's like more bigger than someone else than the industry, yeah. Right, so someone who has a lot of power over. When I read the lyrics, I thought the lyrics were about her, about Billie Eilish coming to terms with her own power over her fans in the industry. I thought it was a song like checking herself, making sure she doesn't abuse her power. Then I went to lyricgenius.com and it just says the whole thing is about that dud, that dude who she was dating in that movie when I, I reviewed her movie. I'll put a link to it up there. Um, uh, what's his name? Q. Q. Okay, so she was dating some letter named Q, uh, who was older, you know, she was, what, 16 and he was 22, and apparently it's all about Q, and... I don't think it's all about Q, but I definitely think that there are some aspects that maybe are, like, referencing him. I don't think the entire song is about it. I feel like that's kind of, like, discrediting the song for it to just be all about another person, but, like, I definitely think that there's some parts that are about Q. So you, you can't read my notes, but you're stealing my point, Goat. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm raising you well. I think that is the best way to think about this song. It is very intentionally not a single pointed thing saying this person abused their power, nor is it about I abuse my power, nor is it about the record industry. It is a general statement about power and how power can be abused. I think it is about all three things and maybe even more. The vagueness of the lyrics I believe is intentional. The way that she plays with pronouns, you know, I am a language teacher. I just had to teach a class where one student kept on messing up pronouns. I was like, who does the dishes at your house? I do the dishes at your house. You do the dishes at my house? It's all very confusing. In this song, she goes to talking about I to talking about she. And it's unclear if she's talking about herself or what she's talking about. And this is what gives the song, uh, no pun intended, its power, is its ability to be a general statement about an abuse of power. 
and I read a little interview with her where it's not specifically about any kind of specific abuse. And this is why I like this song also, is that abuse itself is way, way too often limited to the concept of punching and hitting. When abuse, <laughs> abusing me, abuse is very often, if not most often, psychological, spiritual, emotional. And this song hints at that as well. Verbal. Verbal, exactly. Do you know what's my favorite lyric in this whole song? Um, well, actually, actually, no. I, you don't. I, I, I think I do. You do. But I'm actually, my second favorite lyric is the word try. Just the word try. The beauty of this song is this concept of try not to abuse your power. It doesn't say don't abuse your power. It's actually talking about the difficulty. It is even admitting that it takes effort to not abuse your power. It's not a moral judgment. It's not necessarily a moral judgment. It's just sort of saying, try not to abuse your power. Again, what gives this song its strength, I think is about the generality of the depiction of power inequalities and abuse, but also this concept, try not to abuse your power, is one of the great lines of pop history. Goat, what do you think? Am I going too far? No. No, is that why you were crying? No. Okay, well, maybe, do you wanna say why you were crying or no? No. No, okay. I thought might be the case. So, you know, it starts off with these lyrics, it starts off with the chorus, which is repeated, try not to abuse your power. I know we didn't choose to change. You might not wanna lose your power, but having it is so strange. This is why I thought the song was about her, because how does she know that it's strange? You only know having power is strange if you have power. And if you watch her talk about her influence that she has over people, like, um, like if she gets bangs and then like a lot of girls go to Angelo, our hairdresser, and ask for bangs. I didn't do it because of Nancy Sinatra. Okay, yes, they do it because of Nancy Sinatra. It was because of Nancy Sinatra. Okay, it wasn't because Billie Eilish released her album cover of her new album, Things Are Great Now, and you're right there, and she's got the blonde and the bangs, and all of a sudden you're blonde and bangs. That's okay. It's okay. I so, was already blonde. That's Maybe true. Maybe she probably me. That's Never true. Know. Maybe she did. <laughs> I hear Billie Eilish is a big goat fan. Uh, so, so here, you know, this power that she has over her fans, over the public. So I think this is an indication of what makes it such a general song. But then actually gets into the mechanics of abuse, right? Talks about, I thought you were special. You made me feel like it was my fault. These are all things which, um, if you've never studied abuse, you really should. It's a very necessary thing to understand human relationships because abuse is so prevalent and not just that kind of abuse. <laughs> that one really hurt. Not just that kind of abuse, but you know, these other forms, I thought I was special. If you ask most people who are in abusive relationships and you ask them, did you feel special? The answer is usually yes. The, the correlation between being abused and feeling special. <sighs> no, I might cry because this is such a good point and abuse is such a horrible thing. But then we get to what is my actual favorite line of this song. What is that, Goat? Um, power isn't pain. Power isn't pain. I actually, today, I was teaching French 111, and I started talking about that. I started talking about this line. It had, nothing did? To, I did. it had nothing to do with what we were talking about, but I just got fascinated. Power isn't pain. Power isn't bread. Right, <laughs> exactly. Pain is bread in French. Power isn't pain. So I, I really thought about this a lot. And I, I talked, uh, the last video that, that we did uh, together about Billie Eilish was about the song, I Think Therefore I Am. Mm -hmm. And I talked about how she didn't understand Descartes and you defended Billie Eilish's take on Descartes. Yep. And then it turns out I was totally wrong. Yep. I'm gonna go to a different uh, French philosopher, a okay. 20th century French philosopher Michel Foucault and his very well-known book, uh, Discipline and Punish, uh, which I only have in English here, the French version is at my office. Uh, it's worth reading. And I think that we could use, but, pain, but power isn't pain, right? I think we could use power isn't pain and we could think about it in the context of how Foucault viewed the nature of power. And it goes into this question of what is abuse? And what is an inequality of power? And what is a controlling abusive relationship? You see, he points out in his book, his little drawing, uh, he points out in his book that throughout the Enlightenment, they moved 
from punishing people by whipping them and torturing them in public until they admitted what they did. That is how we used to punish people who did things that were bad. What do we do now for people who are, who are bad? Um, canceling? No, no, no. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I was not talking about canceling. We put them in jail. Oh, okay, yeah, we, put we, we put them in jail. Yeah. We control yeah. them in different ways. And so what Foucault did was he studied the ways that, that prison, the mechanics of power in prison became generalized throughout all of society. The fact that we take tests, the fact that we have dress codes at work, like the way our entire society is run, we went from trying to control and punish people's bodies to controlling their minds, controlling their spirit, controlling their soul. That's what prison is supposed to do. It's supposed to be a corrective force that controls our minds. And not just when we're in prison, but also when we're not in prison. Yeah, because you like it's really hard to get a job when you're out of prison. And like your family is like not yes, happy. Yes, that's true. But also the threat of prison itself keeps us in line. And the, the prison system exists in your school as detention and you stay in line based on the fear of detention. I've never gone into detention. Exactly. Yeah. Right? And so this is all these different ways of thinking about how are people controlled? How is power executed? So power isn't pain is an interesting idea because what she's saying is that this power that these people or this person has over her isn't real power. Just because she feels pain does not mean they have power. That's what made me cry. Yes. Yeah. Because it's not true. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? It's not true. Power is pain. I mean, power, pain is a form of power. I mean, yeah, but... So that's what makes this such a great, a great lyric, is that the fear of pain, and I'm not, I'm not talking about this kind of pain. I'm talking about... Emo Ow, would you stop? I'm talking about the emotional pain that we can feel when we are in an unequal relationship, right? Mm -hmm. The state, the government has this power over us that they can control us and tell us what to do and make our bodies docile and make what we do docile and follow the rules of society out of this fear of pain. I mean, it isn't such a bad thing. I mean, people, yeah. it prevents people from actually doing bad things, but also like sometimes it's unnecessary when they arrest people and stuff. Right, that's the complexity that someday you'll read that Foucault, I'm sure. It's a great, it's a great book. It's pretty easy to read um, for Foucault. But it's like, exactly, there is a positive side to the fact that people follow rules in society. In general, it's good, but the question is who holds the power? If the people who hold the power are good, then the power that they hold over you will be used for good. But if the people who hold the power over you are 22-year-old B-list rap artists who don't have much talent and want to be famous, then maybe it's not good. If yeah. the people who have power over you are industry executives who are trying to get you to, to sell more uh, t-shirts, then maybe it's not good. So I think this is a very fascinating idea. I think this song points to the question of what is the nature of pain and what is the nature of control in a relationship taking it beyond that into something much more interesting. These, uh, an external structure, this power structure that exists that Billy is a victim of. And she is trying to say that pain is not power, but I think it may be. Please put in the comments if you think pain is power. That's, that's clickbaity. I know, I am, I am clickbaity. Okay. I'm, I'm going to call this, is Billie Eilish the worst? Please no, don't. I won't. Um, so uh, what's interesting too is if we look at this kind of Foucauldian look at this song, Q himself is mentioned as losing control. So a, a lot of the idea is that he, if things are made public, and this is talked about in the lyrics, he might lose his contract. Mm -hmm. He might lose his power. So this is an interesting idea where the power is actually shifted within the song to being Billy's power. Mm -hmm. And... People like you who love Billy and get bangs because of Nancy Sinatra. Nancy Sinatra. Because of, yes. These boots were made for walking. Walking all over that reasoning. Um, <laughs> so, you know, uh, you know, like, not like, it, like, now the power has gone and actually Q has lost something. So it's a great song about abuse, about power inequalities, 
it is very moving. It's possible just to listen to it and not feel that. I think you just listen to it in the background, just kind of go like, do, 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 and have it be catchy. That's because we're going to get to the music. Five minutes song go, and we're 15 minutes in. It's four minutes. Four, okay, four minutes. Music. How does the song start, Goat? Guitar. No. Nothing? No, it starts with the sound of someone getting a guitar into position. Why do you do that, Goat? To play the guitar? Yes, but why do you include that on the recording? To play the guitar? Okay, but why does every song where someone plays a guitar, do you not hear the sound of them putting a guitar? Because they edit it. Right. Why would you keep it in versus out? Because it's more raw. Right. It's really Phineas playing. They're getting right up there. They're playing. Phineas and Taylor, you feel like you're inside the room where they're making the song. Really? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was unintentional. I'm sorry. I'm leading to my next point, Billy. Um, goat. Billy? <laughs> Billy goat. She's the Billy goat. I hadn't even thought of that. I'm, I'm very hot in my sweater. I was going to wear another Billie Eilish t-shirt, but... She can't be a... Why? What, what's, what, is a Billy Goat always male? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. I'm a Billy Goat. Okay, I'm going to drop that. Okay. Uh, um, so the, the thing that that's doing is you're right there with Billy and Phineas, and you're recording, and you're trying to be as intimate as possible. And this is a great departure from her first album, where everything's very synthesized, and beep, boop, 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 and, and there's still the immediacy, you know, the Invisalign thing, and you're still supposed to feel like you're there with them, but this is a much different feeling. And why did I say Taylor? Because very clearly, the revolution that Taylor Swift has been ushering in with bringing folk into pop is being seen right here. It is impossible not to see this as a huge reaction to what, uh, what Taylor Swift has been doing and a great sign for things to come. I know you're mad at me, goat, but... I'm it, not mad. You're not? Me. You see it? See what? You see the, the Taylor influence on Billy here? Well, technically I can't see anything right now. But, oh, um, <laughs> okay. Plausible deniability. I don't, I, I, I don't really listen to Taylor Swift. But it's, yeah. it's really nice the way that it works. I love the multiple guitars. It's really nice. Um, what's cool here is the vocal production. What did you think of the vocal production on this, Goat? It was really good. <laughs> That's the level such, of this course we're looking for. Goat. I give such good commentary. You I do. Know, um, it was very... Well, it's very good. What I like about it... Raw. Yeah, it's yeah. very raw. It's kind so, of haunting, too. It's a little bit haunting. Yeah, there you go. Um, whenever you don't know, just just use the word atmospheric. That's what I do. Um, but it's very haunting, and it's nice because and don't kick over the, the tripod, please, oh, okay. or the music stand. Um, it's like not the insane level of detail that we're used to with Billie Eilish's vocal recording of like fifteen different layers of harmonies and all this. It's I would say some of her most subtle work. There is some harmonies in it, but it's not like I think it's Phineas doing the harmonies. Yeah, is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's just the, the whole thing has a lot more of a restrained feel, like she's doing less. And, and she's doing less but achieving more, which I think is maybe part of what Taylor Swift also was able to show, that when, when she made her albums less produced, she was able to actually communicate more emotion. I think this has that. I think there's more emotion in this one song than on her entire first album, Where Do We Go When We Go To Sleep, right? Yeah. Like, like, there's, like there's just that much emotion in this song. The weirdest thing about this song though, what the hell is going on in the verse? Like, I felt like my, like my phone was broken. There's this weird, like, sub-bass sound. It's like staccato. Like, I just kept writing, like, what's going on? Like, things sound broken. It's almost like hyper-pop. It's like this sub-bass and staccato. How do you describe it, Goat? I, I didn't hear that. You didn't hear it? Okay, I, I just hear it. You it on, like, were you listening to it on headphones? I listen to it on headphones. I listen to it on, on the, on the hi-fi here. I listen to it on my computer. The verse has this very unsettling, jarring feeling, well, I which think is it's on purpose. Yeah, oh, definitely it's on purpose. It's yeah. it's to credit, but it's doing something new and doing something interesting. And I think Phineas is doing something interesting again. And I think it's I think it's a little bit influenced by hyper pop and kind of like disjointed pop music that doesn't feel very pleasant. But then in the second verse, it becomes almost reggae like with these kind of shuffling synthesizers that go left to right in the headphones. Uh, kind of reminds you that they make music in, you know, like in a bedroom. And then it ends very much abruptly. I have one complaint, Goat. What? I'm worried about Billie Eilish's next album, Better This Way. 
Do you know why I'm upset? Happier than ever. Happier than ever. Yes. Where are the bops? The, the, Where are the bangers? Oh, there's gonna be records. Where is the lit music? Dad. Fam? Dad? I am Dad. frustrated AF. Dad. What? Take a deep breath. Three songs and they're all like, oh, my future, so your power. Therefore, uh, like you think about our first album and it's like, where do we go? But all good girls go to hell. Well, and, and it's all and like, in that album too, there is some down songs. Zanny, right, the, but, like when the party's over. But she's released like you. three Zannies in a row. She has not released three. Okay, therefore I am. Is that a Zanny? Yeah, it's not a Zanny, but it's not like a bop. It it's is. not like an AF lit Dad, fam. Dad. Okay. Anyways, take, take a deep breath. I will. I, I look forward. To, I just hope. I hope that they don't go so far into the Taylor style thing that they don't do that other thing that they do that I love so much. Well, maybe Bad thing. I know. I guess it wouldn't be. I guess I'll have to get used to it. Dad, stop being such an old man. And also, like, I'm not an old man. Did you hear the vocabulary that I You're used? You're an old man and a toddler at the same time. <laughs> I said, I, I said AF. That's how the cool kids talk. No. Um, I, I will talk briefly about the video that she directed. I like very much that she directs her own videos. Um, it takes place in Simi Valley and it kind of zooms up to her. And what did you think of the video? I liked it. Yeah. What did you like besides the hairstyle? I like the snake. Yeah, so I will say, so the snake is real apparently? The snake is real, his name is Archie. Okay, so the snake is real for the first scene, and then there are some pretty bad, uh, like, pretty bad special effects. I don't think, I, I, they were, that, that wasn't real? The part where it's around her? No, that is, that is so fake. And it reminded me of something from one of our favorite movies, a movie called Rogue One, a Star Wars story. There's a thing called Boar Gullet, which is this weird sort of octopus snake that like covers you and makes you tell the truth. Boar Gullet! Boar Gullet! Boar Gullet! <laughs> know the truth! I felt like she was being attacked. Lies! <laughs> Lies! Lies. De deception! Deception! <laughs> So maybe Boar Gullet needs to go on cue. I don't know. It reminded me of Boar Gullet, but that was my little joke. I'm keeping that as a surprise for Goat. I thought she'd like that. I really like that. Yeah. Wow. I, mean, I, I, like, I like the image. I like the image of the snake. I like the image of her like being kind of trapped, and I liked her getting out of it. I love this meditation on power. I love this meditation on abuse. And even if she doesn't do AF bops, oh uh, I, I think this is going to be... I really look forward to this album. I... Happier than ever. All right. Well, until she releases the next song for the goat, I will say, uh, what do I always say, goat? There's the camera.